work on our writing styles. So when we talk about writing something, there are four types of styles, basic styles that we always use. You can use a combination of these or you can use them one or two together. Okay. Now, first one is your descriptive style of writing. Okay. Sorry, expository style of writing here. Now, expository means by the name itself, we can understand exposing something. Okay. You try to, don't take it in a negative way. Exposing means you are trying to talk everything about that particular topic, product or the service. Okay. That means about their history, their present and their future. That is what is expository style of writing. Your textbooks, school textbooks, okay, medical books, legal documents. Uh, then you have your um, uh, recipe books, okay, uh, newspaper articles, magazine articles. They use expository style of writing, okay. Clear for everyone in your uh, this thing in your uh, recipe books, you might you know you might read it that uh, one tablespoon of sugar. Now one tablespoon of sugar means they they are going to describe if you are using granulated sugar what will happen if you are using cube sugar what will happen if you are using brown sugar what will happen if you are using fine sugar what will happen. Okay, so this is what is your expository style of writing where you discuss each and every detail of the topic. Clear for everyone? Expository style. Next is your persuasive style. Persuasive means by the name itself, you're convincing your readers to do something. Okay. Now to take that action, that action can be go and buy a product or service or maybe uh, to go and, uh, uh, you know, subscribe for the newsletter, go and, uh, uh, go, uh, go and visit our store. Okay. It can be any type of convincing that the writer wants to do for their audience. Okay, so that is your persuasive style. You persuade your audience to do something. Okay, all your uh, marketing emails, your speech. Speech is like if you are, if you give us way, vote, if you vote for us, then we are going to do this for you. So you are persuading them. Okay, so that is what is your speech. Uh, then you have your uh, what else? Your social media. Uh, uh, ad copies, okay. The vid the advertisements that you watch on televisions, the advertisements you watch on uh, YouTube, on your uh, social media feed, all these use persuasive writing. Your uh, this thing, um, uh, uh, resume and your cover letter. Cover letter is you are persuading the hiring manager to hire you. Okay, clear for everyone. Persuasive style of writing. Next is your descriptive style of writing. Descriptive style of writing means you about, about a product, you provide each and every vivid, vivid detail. That is your descriptive style of writing. Five senses are sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of hear. You are going to work on all the five senses for the restaurant. Okay. Now I am writing something about that restaurant for my readers who have never experienced that restaurant okay they've never been to that particular place so what i'll do i i will talk about you know what my experience is so here i'm going to talk about as soon as i entered the restaurant this is how the tables were set the color of the walls were this so what i'm using i'm using a sense of sight for my audience Okay, even though my audience is not present there, they can have, they have not never experienced that particular place, but still they can imagine. It. Okay, now if I am tasting the dish, I will say that how the dish is tasting in my mouth. Okay, so I will say that the taste is you know sour, sour or sweet. It is the mo it is very moist. It is very soft in my mouth. So what I am doing, I am giving them a sense of taste. Okay, suppose if I'm using a cosmetic brand, okay, so if, I, if I'm using a, a body lotion, so I will tell my audience how the body lotion is touching my skin. How does it feel like? Is it soft? Is it hard? How does it smell? Okay, so I'm using different types of senses here. Clear for everyone? So you use descriptive style of writing in your poems. Okay, you tell you tell your audience uh, that the sun is, the sun is setting with a, with a deep, 
uh, red or oh, what should i say with this and the sky turns into deep red so now you will suddenly imagine that the sun is setting and the sky is turning into a deepish red color okay so your brain will take you to that particular uh, experience so that is what is descriptive style mostly all the authors uh, what should i say um uh, your um, uh, novels okay so where even when you are not involved in the story but your brain is giving you that experience if i am describing a particular character in my story what will happen there now people are people cannot oh, uh, i i have never seen that character but still my brain is imagining that character my brain is giving a face to that character okay so that is what is descriptive style clear for everyone okay next mm -hmm. is your narrative narrative yes. means you're narrating something okay so here you develop characters you develop conversation between those characters you develop conflict drama you include emotions that is what is narrative style of writing okay now whenever we work on the narrative style yes. there are three types of point of view okay so first one is your first person point of view okay second is your second person point of view and then you have your third person point of view okay now when we talk about our first person point of view first person point of view means for example if you have read chetan bhagat stories okay novels you will see that he is one of the character in the story that means the narrator is the character in the story okay so you use pronouns like i sorry we me myself okay these yes. are all your pronouns that you are using okay clear for everyone okay so here in your chetan bhagat story you will see that he is playing one of the character okay of the story that is what is your uh, first person point of view clear for everyone is your second person point of view second person point of view means you are including conversations something like for example you might have been reading now newspapers magazines they tend to become a bit boring because of the way that they are published black and white color okay so not every article you will see this but most of the articles that they ask questions in between or maybe at the starting of the article and i read a question okay and i will imagine the answer by chance my answer is somewhat similar to the answer that is after that okay then i that interest is generated in the article okay i will start reading that article with much more interest that is what i am using a second person point of view i am use making it conversational okay clear now next is your third person point of view now third person point of view means uh you might have read books by amish tripathi anyone amish tripathi john grisham sydney sheldon khaled husseini um this chitra banerji now in those stories the narrator is not involved in the story okay the narrator is sep sitting separately and then the narrator narrates the story okay so here the uh, narrator is not involved in the story okay so you use pronouns like he she they okay so you use such type of words there clear for everyone first second and third person point of view you can okay. always combine first person point of view and second person point of view okay 
you can combine third person point of view and second person point of view but you cannot you can never combine first person and third person point of view okay i'm repeating again you can combine first person point of view and second person point of view you can combine third and second person point of view but you can never combine first and third person point of view okay because third first and third person are totally opposite to each other okay if in one story if in a story uh, a character is you know the narrator is involved in the story how can you use a third person point of view okay and if you are using a third person point of view suddenly you start using first person point of view it will confuse your audience okay first first time you were not involved then suddenly you are involved in the story how can this happen okay clear for everyone now narrative style of writing you use obviously in your novels you have uh, poems you have uh, biographies you have anecdotes okay so all these things are there where you use your narrative style of writing okay now you have personal style of writing now these are the four different styles that people use okay no matter what type of content you are writing now personal style of writing is very very individualistic in nature okay according to your own experiences your own beliefs your own perceptions your writing defines okay for example if mary and shivalika both are writing on a same topic we are both we are both writing on leadership okay we are using everything same our uh, our topic is same our research material is same the sub topics that we are including are same but our writing will differ because her perceptions are totally different and mine are different my opinions differ her opinions differ her experience related to the topic is different my experience is different okay now based our on our thinking on our perceptions we are going to write the content okay though everything is same everything is you know uh, is almost similar to each other but the way that we are going to approach the topic is totally different so that is what is your personal writing style okay here you give your own beliefs your own opinions okay you talk about a particular topic using your own understanding okay so that is what is your personal style of writing many bloggers uh, journalists uh, feature writers okay they use personal style of writing okay clear for everyone now you have reflective style this is the sixth and the final style of writing reflective style by the name itself is reflection okay reflection means you are reflecting back to your experiences okay in with respect to a particular product service or the topic okay for example you recently had an experience with taj group of hotels you booked a hotel okay a hotel room you reached there maybe your experience was good or maybe your experience was bad okay you will talk about that experience okay all your review writers book review writers movie review uh, product reviews okay these people they use reflective style of writing okay many a times it happens that reflective style and personal style are overlapped okay because here both you are you in personal style is the only difference is in personal style you don't always use your experience you use your opinions you use your perception in reflective style you use your opinions you use your experience also here okay clear for everyone shadow writing is where is basically um something for example it is something like a ghost writing okay now ghost writing is most of the writers are ghost writers i am also a ghost writer ghost writer means many companies uh individuals they all hire you okay to write content for them but the content is not published under your name rather that companies or that individuals name that is what is shadow writing or ghost writing okay 
something like if you if a, um, I, I i have written a lot of content uh, for academic content for many teachers many professors okay now but if you go and read that content you will never see my name there you will always see that professor's name okay so most of the writers they are all ghost writers even i am also a ghost writer now whatever content that i write on that website that goes under my name because i am an editor there okay now these are the examples of expository style of writing expository is where you try to inform or educate your client oh sorry your readers okay you talk everything about it about a particular topic so here something like for example technology and scientific advancements have made the utilization of eco friendly energy possible where climate conditions allow it is possible to harness solar power or wind power for energy the term solar energy refers to the utilization of sunlight to produce electricity and energy okay so here you are getting informed about the renewable forms of energy here okay next is your persuasive style an excursion to switzerland is an unforgettable trip and that you will never forget so what they are doing they are persuading you to take that excursion trip to switzerland okay then is your descriptive style the sun set bathes the sky in deep ruby red this is what the example i gave you now your brain will imagine okay eyes as dark as the night sky you will imagine such eyes which are as dark as the night okay then your narrative style she hears a raspy voice just before the shadow moves across the balcony hesitantly she takes a step forward so this is what you are you are uh, uh, talking about a situation here you are describing a situation okay next is your personal style when i was 9 year old my parents uh, bought a smart tv the new machine stopped buzzing and enthralled me as they fall asleep the next night i couldn't control myself i watched it all night of course i passed out in front of the tv my parents found me sprawled out in the living room in the next morning so you're talking about a situation that you uh, about you when you were a kid okay that is personal style reflective is i can't believe it's already been a year since i started college it feels like only yesterday that i was moving into my dorm room and meeting my new roommate but in many ways it feels like a lifetime ago i have grown so much over the past year both as a person and as a student okay so you are talking about your experience here in the dorm room okay clear for everyone now so let us now uh, work on our tones okay now what is basically a tone a tone is any now uh, let us before giving and making you understand what is a tone let me give you a situation okay now suppose you are reading a particular content okay by reading the content you feel either happy okay you feel angry or maybe you feel sad you feel a bit uh, you know uh, maybe you don't feel anything there's a neutral neutrality in the tone okay now whatever feeling that you get after reading a particular maybe you feel contented okay you feel satisfied after reading the content now that is basically is a tone a tone is anything that the writer wants their audience to feel okay now it can be a writer it can be a speaker also suppose you must be hearing different types of speeches or you are a speaker yourself so you try to imbibe an environment where your audience is comfortable they enjoy or sometimes you know storytellers are there the storytellers based on the story based on the situation if the situation is very tense they will speak it in such a way the tone of their voice will change they will have the modulations in their voice okay such time it is very easy to understand the tone when somebody is speaking they are using their expressions but whenever you are reading a content that time it becomes a bit difficult to convey the tone okay so how you are going to incorporate those tones that we are going to understand okay and also at the same time the tones help 
you to understand the attitude of the uh, person who has written the content. Okay, so that is what is your tone. Now your tone can be formal, informal, professional, adventurous, um, happy, sad, okay, uh, op uh, opportunistic, friendly. Okay, so these can be different types of tones that you can use in your content. Okay, you can use a combination of tones, not a problem. However you want, you can write it down. Okay. Now, one thing to be, uh, to be very, very careful, whenever you're writing a content related to a brand, a company, a corporate, okay, never use sarcastic or a negative tone, okay? Whenever you're writing a content for a brand, any content, okay, it can be website content, blog, article, research papers, white papers, books, or a story, or anything that you're writing. Okay, never use a sarcastic or a negative tone. Okay, but if you're writing a story based on the story, if you know, based on the conversation or based on the situation, there is sarcasm also. Sometimes there's negativity also in the story. That time it is okay. But whenever you're writing an information or educational content, that time never use a sarcasm or the negative tone, especially in your medical writing. Okay, if you are into medical writing or if you want to be a medical writer, you always, your content is always supposed to have a neutral tone. Neutral means no emotions attached. Okay, now why is that important? Now, suppose, for example, if you're writing for a disease, you're writing about a disease here. Okay, so maybe cancer. So now there are many patients, okay. Uh, they have they might have different types of experiences with the disease okay either their loved one is expired because of the disease maybe they are suffering because of that disease okay you never know what has happened with them so that is why whenever you're writing for such type of content you're never going to use any type of tone okay you're going to make it very very straightforward in nature Okay, your only purpose is to inform them about that particular disease or the instrument that you're writing about, medical, medical related. Okay, clear for everyone? Now, your first one is your formal tone. Formal is very, very professional in nature. Okay, your content is very, should be very sophisticated in nature. Okay, whenever you're writing such type of content, uh, such contents are, you know, whenever you're reading uh, uh, this um, user manual or instructional manuals are there, uh, then you have these, you know, even if you buy board games, with the board games, you have this instructional uh, manual with you, okay? That is also, again, a very formal piece of content, very sophisticated language they use, okay? So that the audience get the information, get educated out of it, okay? So that is what is a formal content, okay? Formal tone. Informal tone. Informal tone is, is where you try to make, to have a very friendly type of conversation. Okay, most of the companies now on social media, they have started using a very, very informal type of communication with their audiences, with their consumers. Okay, where you try to, um, to make sure that your audiences, they feel that they are talking to the someone from the company itself. Okay, a human, a human touch. Okay, that is what is your informal uh, tone. Okay. Then now you have optimistic tone. Optimistic is you give a very positive feeling to your audience. Okay. You give them, uh, you, you tell them that we are there with you. Okay. You tell them that, you know, you give them a futuristic view of what is going to happen. How your, uh, how your content is going to, uh, or maybe how your product or service is going to help you. Okay, so that is what is optimistic. Uh, for example, you have what example can I give you? Um, okay, you have this Amul. Okay, Amul brand is there. Now, Amul brand, it helps the people, the audience to know that Amul always try to show 
whatever is happening in the country the current events good or bad okay amul's uh, brandings always change their uh, posters outside their social media content they keep on changing okay what does it mean it shows that whatever you are feeling as the citizen of this country even we are feeling the same okay so that is what is optimistic you give them a very positive feeling now what happens here if amul if amul shows such type of things you feel that amul is the brand of the country okay if what we are feeling if amul is feeling the same thing so that means it is among us okay so that trust increases in the brand clear for everyone now then is your worried worried scared you scare your audience there is something called as a fear monger effect okay in advertising world fear monger effect is basically they use such type of tones they use a worried a scared afraid tone okay now for example aqua guard is there what does aqua guard advertisements they do they tell you that whatever you are drinking whatever water that you are drinking is bad even though you are using a eco guard machine but still whatever water that you are that is coming out of your machine is bad it is bad for your health now the machine that we are showing in the advertisement that has got nutrients minerals which is good for your body okay so now what will happen you will get scared oh my god i am drinking bad bad water my 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 uh, parents or say my kids are drinking bad water my family is drinking bad water so now it is up to me that i have to give them a, a healthier water so what you will do you will rush out to the uh, shop and you will buy the new machine okay so that is your fear monger effect or you are in, you are incorporating a scare tone or worried tone okay clear for everyone now you have friendly tone friendly means you are trying to have a a, a tone where you can uh, generate trust among your audience okay something similar to your opportunistic tone okay where you try to have a very very friendly good communication very uh, uh, light hearted communication with your audience okay most of the brands especially the fmcg brands are there you might have uh, be um, uh, watching these uh, you know um, uh, what is that advertisement cheese advertisement go cheese okay go cheese advertisements they use a very friendly tone they show that normally you know that you are a, you are in a family kids are there uh, uh, young generation is there they are eating amul sorry uh, go cheese okay so that is what is you are using a very friendly tone you are using a very friendly environment to showcase your product that whenever you are happy whenever you know in your normal life day to day life you can you can trust our product to give you that experience okay then you have curious okay you generate curiosity among your audience for example um uh, you have these um Uh, car products are there okay these car brands are there they will they will always tell you we are unveiling our next car of the year uh, in the next year or maybe in the upcoming month okay so that is what you generate curiosity that is what apple also does okay till right now iphone 15 is not there in the market but that curiosity is now main now they now that thing is there that okay it is going to have this body it is going to have this software it is going to have these functionalities it is going to have these different types of features okay so that is what you generate curiosity once that product is out there in the market now out of your curiosity you are going to go and buy that product okay so that is what brands do to gain to to not to let your audience stop thinking about your product to create a better recall value in the market that is your generating curiosity next is your assertive assertiveness is giving some giving out confidence okay telling people that you are the leader in the market something like what audi cars are doing okay even if you go and watch their advertisements you know the voice the voice over okay in those cars is very very you know person with a very deep voice okay and they will slowly they will take they, they, they their car will slowly come out of the you know 
maybe out of the showroom or the garage and the you will see the wheels you will see the lights the lights are slowly switched on and then a, a dark blue or black color car comes out of the um, uh, showroom or the garage and then uh, there is a deep voice okay now that deep voice is something that gives confidence okay now whenever you go and buy a audi car you will feel that confidence within you okay all the luxury cars they have they need to work on this assertive tone on this confident tone okay clear uh, if you remember i don't know how many of you remember there is a car uh, by maruti sx4 okay when those advert at that sx4 entered the market their um, uh, uh, brand line was something related to men the man's car or the man of the future something like that okay so what does it mean it means that it spelled out confidence for the owner okay clear for everyone next is encouraging encouraging is you are being supportive okay you are trying to encourage your audience to take up the particular uh, action or a decision that is what an encouraging tone okay um, uh, many brands like um uh, what should i say which brand example can i give you um okay these uh, life insurance okay life insurance uh, advertisements these are encouraging okay they encourage you to take up life insurance okay they 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 tell you that if you are taking up this then you are doing a very good thing for your family okay they are encouraging you they are supporting you okay then you have surprised sub surprised is where you use a uh, you know a, a very uh, uh, tone where your audience is surprised they are astonished that is what a surprising tone uh, whenever there is a new product launch a new event by the organization many companies they use such type of tone to generate a curiosity something related to curious tone and surprise tone they are similar in nature to each other okay then you have cooperative tone cooperative is you are trying to have a good collaboration good engagement good relationships with your audience banks all the banks okay whenever you see their advertisements they will always have this collaborative type of tones okay where they tell their audience that uh, their consumers that if you uh, you know uh, the, uh, they will show you that a, a consumer is sitting and the bank person is sitting and they are having a good conversation both of them are smiling they are happy okay so that is what is a coll collaborative tone okay so these are the different types of words to describe the different tones that are there you have pedantic you have sensuous slang vulgar picturesque complex colloquial then you have long esoteric all these words are there which can you which you can use okay to describe a particular tone okay clear for everyone